People have been asking about it, and I'm going to show you today the number one way to check the rear wheel bearings in a C3 Corvette. Please ignore the voice, I've been sick, so this is what you're going to get. But the best way to do this is you need to remove your caliper and you need to find another rotor off of a, a car, preferably a C3, you can borrow the ones from the front if they've already been drilled out. But basically what you want to do is you want to attach it end to end so that you have you know, kind of a better um, way to grab onto it. And what it does, it gives you leverage where you can move this and see if you have any play. <coughs> so the reason why I do this with a car on jack stands and I do this uh, with the wheel off is because there's a couple things on these suspensions that can kind of give you a false positive. The first is going to be uh, this bushing in the very front of the trailing arm. If that's worn or you're missing some shims, the movement of the arm side to side can simulate a bad bearing when really it's not. Uh, another thing that can happen is these strut rods that go side to side. Those can go bad and you can have movement on the bottom in and out like this that will also simulate a bad bearing when there really isn't one. The main thing you want to do is you want to watch in here. So you have your half shaft that connects to uh, your flange right here which then connects to the spindle. That is where the movement is that you want to watch for. I'm going to show you this passenger side one first because it's not as bad as the driver side but it kind of gives you an idea of the range of movement that you can expect on uh, these rear suspensions. So what you want to look for is you want to look for movement inside here. Basically you want to see this part right here wiggle and this part not move at all. That's the way, way you can see if the bearing is what you're moving. So this one isn't bad, <clears throat> but it's also not good. That The noise you hear, you don't want to hear that noise. So this one probably wouldn't, you know, you'd probably use it for a little bit, but it is on its way out. And it probably should be replaced. So here on the driver's side, remove the caliper, attach my second rotor. I'm going to put my hands on 12 and 6, wiggle back and forth, and I'll show you this one. Remember, watch this move and this knot. Another thing you can check is this isn't moving either. So we know what it is. So this one's super bad. You know this caliper. And you can tell right there that needs rebuilt. 